And that is why this community center will mean so much. There is individual space. Uh, shout out to Steven Rodriguez. I think I took your office, Steven Hernandez. I took your office and I was taking lots of pictures and I said, this is beautiful. I can invite people in and people feel that just closeness. They feel that connection. You speak the language, you understand where they come from. That is what a community center means. It's a hub, it's a space, it's a beacon, it's a foundation, it's the fabric of the work we do. So let me say again, congratulations to Chase. Thank you for your investments. And most importantly, thank you for never giving up on the Bronx. There are many people that will give up on this borough. But it truly takes, Mr. Chairman, it takes special, unique people that see the promise and the potential to stay the course and to stay on this journey with all of us. And I thank you for that on behalf of our great borough of the Bronx. So congratulations to everyone. We officially open the doors here on Fordham Road at our Chase Community Center. And now it is my honor and absolute privilege to recognize my colleague, Mi Amiga, my sister in all things when it comes to the West Bronx, recently passing a $237 billion budget for the state of New York, and that money is coming right here to the Bronx. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome our assembly member of District 86, Assemblaita Yudelka Tapia. Thank you to my borough president uh, for, for that introduction, and, and it's very difficult, let me tell you. I've been living this for a long time to follow <laughs> Vanessa when she speaks, okay? <laughs> because she goes, she comes in here and she says everything that anybody can say, she says to her. <laughs> but, but it's called, we are, of course we are a team. Pero claro, nosotros somos un equipo. A, diferen a diferencia de muchas uh, de los que vinieron aquí, dijeron que nacieron aquí, que, que fueron creados aquí, no. I wasn't born here. I was born in the Dominican Republic and I got here when I was 20 years old. And, and I raised my children in this community. I got here to the Bronx. I have I never left because I saw that my community didn't know how to fight for, for the, the, things, the, the necessity that our community have that they didn't have the right that they didn't deserve it. And that's why I never left. And and I am a product of the Bronx. I, I learned more and more every single day in how to move our community forward. And I want to, to actually thank you, Chase Bank. You know, we have you know, some discrepancy in the, back, in, the, in, the, in the back in the days, because I mean, they weren't, you know, right in the community. We didn't have the diversity that we needed. I see, I could see that have us change a lot, and I say that because <laughs> I have known Jesenia for a long time, and I know all the work that she does in our community day in and day out. And that's why I can say that actually the culture has been changing, because I, am a, I, have, I have been a witness of how our community has been suffering and fighting and moving forward, and the Bronx is Nothing like it was 32 years ago when I got to this country. It is way, way, way much better than it was. And of course, it's a, it's a great pleasure for me uh, to celebrate today this center, this community center that we, that we need so, because I mean, uh, financial literacy, literacy is, is a lack in our community, especially in, in poor communities like this community. 
uh, that we don't know what generational wealth is because we never learn it. Because, I mean, we were fighting for other things to make sure to put the food on the table. And, and we didn't have the savings to put in there to, to actually think about that. You could save money for a vacation, for do all the things that you had to do. And, and that is, I mean, a, a good, a big step in, in preparing our communities to actually that generation of work for our future, uh, for our children, for our future generations, and for every single one from the Bronx, because, I mean, it's true. We are the boogie down Bronx, but I mean, we are the best borough that it is. That's why we never leave. <laughs> Um, far too, for far too many years in our residents, their sibling isn't the need, the need expertise in how to generate and protect wealth. How to invest for today and for tomorrow. We never learned that. So this center is going to be part of doing that and doing that process and doing that, that thing. That's why I'm so impressed by the work that Chase team and community managers have done over the years because I, like I said, I am, I am a witness of the evolution that we've been having. I have the pleasure of knowing Yesenia for many years and I know what she does. This financial, liter uh, financial literacy workshops with schools, nonprofits, and community partners are a lifetime to our residents and his new branch in this new branch will further that important work. Congratulations to all. Thank you, Mr. Edmund, uh, for your leadership and for thinking that actually the Bronx, we can invest in the Bronx, because I mean here we have good people that are just breaking the line to actually make sure that we move forward every single day. So I'm, 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 I'm very happy to be here and to say hello to all my friends here I don't have to name them again because I mean the borough president already did it. <laughs> but I am I am very happy to be here and to be part of this evolution and to make sure that we're going to continue together fighting for our communities and bringing the resources that are needed to our most uh, small businesses, our schools, and everything. Like I said, we just finished finding the biggest budget in any state in the United States, 237 billion dollars, and those part of those is. $35.3 billion for our schools to make sure that we continue moving all our children and our future generation forward. So that's what we were doing in Albany do all the time. And of course, now I have the, the honor of, of introducing uh, another fighter that we have here. And she, she, is, she is Dominican, yes, but she's a product of the Bronx. She was born in these streets and she was raised in these streets. And from here, she was that she was she was she got to go to Harvard University, to Prince University, to, to all of those things. I mean, it was from here, from these streets, which did my say say that yes, we can do it. Yes, we can get there. Doesn't matter where where you were born and where you where, where you were raised. It doesn't matter what the borough it is, because I mean, you can make it. And I want to call our council member, the council member for this. Bank, like I am the assembly member, uh, Pierina Sanchez, and it, she's our she's our fighter in, in the city council, and I am so proud. Uh, thank you so much, assembly member Tapia, and thank you so much, Chase Bank. This is this is a beautiful day. We don't always get to celebrate investments and just a belief in our people, and so that is what today represents. And I just want to thank you so much, and to to Chase in particular, you know. I, um, I grew up coming to this bank. Uh, my, my parents bank with Chase. My, my brother has a small business. He banks with Chase. Pretty much every, my grandma bank with Chase. <laughs> so I, I grew up coming to, to this bank in particular, but my, my relationship with Chase took a turn um, in 2020. Um, if you recall, on June 1st of 2020, Fordham Road and the surrounding community, Burnside, we had massive looting. So not only were we being so hard hit, being the epicenter of the epicenter of the pandemic here in the city of New York, but then we had this social unrest. We were in the middle of a, a gigantic Black Lives Matter mobilization nationally. And in this neighborhood, we had civil unrest. 
And when that happened, Chase was hit, um, Amalgamated Bank was hit, um, so many of our small businesses in the area were hit. And there, were, there was this moment, um, and I'm, I'm looking at you, Deborah. <laughs> and there was this moment where we weren't sure as a community if Chase would be coming back to Burnside in particular. And I remember we, I, I was a, a candidate for council at the time, doing this crazy thing like, yeah, Harvard, Princeton, whatever. You know, running in the community was the biggest and most difficult thing that I ever did. And we took a chance and we said, you know what, our community doesn't mobilize. We, we don't have this history of mobilizing. But what if we do? And so we came together and we manifested and we had, you know, maybe like 30, 40 people outside of uh, Chase Bank on, on Burnside Avenue and we protested and we said, look, we want investment. We need your service. We need you to keep invested in the Bronx. Because this part, this part of the of the Bronx, you know, compared to nationally, nationally we have a 7% underbanked rate. In the Bronx, we have a 17% underbanked rate. In the West Bronx, right here where we're standing, we have a 30% underbanked rate. And what that translates to is customers who opt for more expensive services and even predatory services. And so the hit of Chase potentially leaving, and Amalgamated did end up leaving, that was a lot for us to bear. But we started conversations with Deborah Charlemagne, thank you. <laughs> and, and so much of your leadership here in the city, and you recommitted and recommitted and recommitted and recommitted, and you're on Burnside, and it's a beautiful space, and here today, this is also a beautiful space. So I'm, I'm just here to say thank you so much on behalf of uh, the community. Thank you for everything you do, the investment in Bronx Works, um, all that you do to support, not just, okay, I'm gonna fund a different nonprofits, but funding organizations and supporting organizations that look to the social mobility of, of Bronx, Bronx sites. That's a really big deal. Thank you so much for doing that. And so with that, um, thank you. I, I, I will leave it at that because literally everything has been said by elected officials. <laughs> Uh, but here in partnership, I will be coming to you to see if we can use the space for community uh, meetings and mobilizations, and, and just thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Deidre Porsche, and I lead our business, our community business, nationally. I think we've heard today, and I think we'd all agree, that small business and nonprofits are essential to a thriving economy. Well, our next guests are not just making change locally, they are transforming how we do business by providing jobs, by for creating opportunity to make people's lives better. So please help me welcome our guest, Daniel Garcia of Salsa Caterer. <laughs> Dr. Prevet, come on up from Odyssey House. Thank you for being here. Thank you both for being here. This is so, we're going to jump right in. Um, talk to us a little bit about salsa catering and, and your commitment to the Bronx. Right. So I'll, I'll share a little about Salsa Caters first. Uh, salsa Caters was established 34 years ago in the South Bronx. Uh, we were born from uh, catering and special events. Then we grew into a food service establishment where we cater for senior centers and um, uh, shelters throughout New York City. We also have a, uh, um, uh -uh. oops, no problem. A, a quick serve concept called Salsa Express. It was born in the old Yankee Stadium where we uh, were the first Latino concessionaire there. Very exciting. Uh, that, that grew into corporate cafeteria um, services in the concession area, and we are now uh, expanding that to brick and mortar. About tw uh, two years ago, we expanded to a 20,000 square foot facility in the uh, South Bronx. Wow, which we're really excited about to, to meet our current opportunities and growing opportunities. Um, what else can I say? We, 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 uh, we're excited about all the, the growth and opportunity that we've undergone. Uh, my, my commitment to the Bronx and how that works is that I, I grew up in the South Bronx. 
very proud uh, to have grown up in the South Bronx, my community. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, neighborhood. Going into one home is like going into your own home. Every parent, then uncle and aunt, was everyone else's parent, uncle and aunt. You yeah. took care of each other, everybody uh, either supported you or could scold you if you were out of line. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, going on in my history, I had an opportunity to go to college, upstate New York, have the college. And at that point, you know, while I love where I, I, I my, my, my upbringing and, and growing up in South Bronx, I realized that there was opportunity and there were other ways to live and, 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 and also what the community didn't have, or at least that I didn't know. And I love my parents and my background. Uh, and you know, we, we come from a humble background where we didn't know about education or opportunities on a wider level. So I got exposed. So uh, came back, happy to uh, establish my business in the South Bronx. And what did it mean to me? It meant an opportunity to provide jobs. Yes. Right. So back when I established Salsa, that was a time when uh, some of the opportunities weren't open to uh, Latinos or women, and, and so. We had no problem with that, obviously, right? <laughs> so, uh, so we were able to provide jobs. We established a training program. Yeah. We wanted anyone who came to the company not to come in as a porter and stay there, but to grow, to become a a, a, a prep cook and then a, a chef and so on. So we move our staff along. We partner with Bronx Works, and for example, in, in, in other um, having internship programs in the company. Um, yeah, like, I tell my staff, we, we cater, right? So we do food, but that's not really what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, coming from this community, sometimes we're, like, we're in Yankee Stadium, or sometimes we're catering for the first uh, Latino judge. We're doing historical events. We're making historical moments. And people hiring us, they're hiring us because whoever's hiring us is making a statement as well. They're opening a door as well. And if we show up and we don't do it excellently, good or bad, mm -hmm. this is where society is right now. It's a door that potentially closes on another Latino business or minority business. So I tell them, when well, we're going, we got to bring it. Right. We got to bring it well. So we have some defining moments like when we did an event at the Met. And someone came up to me and said, oh, what Manhattan cater are you? And I went, well, actually, we're from the South Bronx. I <laughs> love that. You know? So oh, that's great. It's, it's stories like that and, and breaking ground and breaking stereotypes that make a difference you know, for moving the community forward. I love that. I love that. Very rich culture that you're sharing with the community and with all the customers that we serve. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Dr. Provet, talk to us about Odyssey House. Thank you so much. Thank you to Chase for inviting us in Odyssey House here. It's a really a, a great honor. Odyssey House has been um, in business for 45 years. We were founded in 1967 at the height of the opioid epidemic. We recently had a different type of epidemic, the fentanyl epidemic. So we're kind of going back to our beginnings. Odyssey House, though, has become much more than a substance abuse agency. We have programs treating the mentally ill. We have uh, programs treating people of a vast array of medical issues, HIV and AIDS, including. And we have several facilities, several in the Bronx as well, treating people with severe mental illness, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder. So our commitment has broadened over the years to help troubled New Yorkers uh, get their way, find their road forward. Part of our belief is that when you give to those people who are most underrepresented and have struggled the most, that defines, in essence, the best of a society. Embrace that notion, and it's, it's so wonderful to be here with Chase, because that to us is the meaning of the work we do. It's when a society can address its most trouble 
it invested its most trouble, that society grows and profits from that. One of the things we find that I found over the many years working with people who abuse drugs is that many of these people, once they get into a sustained recovery, themselves become very successful. I like to joke because they have the skills involved. The skills of being a substance user are considerable. So what we do is take those skills and say to someone, try pivoting here. Try finding meaning in life, a purpose in life. We're often talking about purpose, that we need purpose to evolve, to grow, to be stronger in our families. I'd finally mention a couple things that uh, I know there was much mention of the heart here. A couple things about honesty and health that I think are very special. We've uh, uh, dedicated a fairly big effort to doing art. And when you come to an honesty house, and I hope many of you uh, uh, would reach out to tour an honesty house, we have client art all over the world, all over the walls. Very powerful art that our clients who have never done art. We don't do art therapy. We don't interpret art. We don't use art to uh, 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 understand people's struggles. We do art to be therapeutic itself. And there's beautiful art around the facility. In addition, Odyssey House is dedicated to physical health and sports. And with, with my team, uh, we have several uh, uh, marathon runners. Uh, we run the New York City Marathon every year. We've completed, I think, maybe 600 people in recovery over the years in the New York City Marathon. Anyone here who wants to join the marathon, please reach out to me, including Mr. Dime. <laughs> Fantastic. We, we run the marathon. We have a yeah, beautiful. We have a water station <laughs> up uh, uh, in East Harlem. We man a whole block, and uh, the marathon's a big event. We also do a fundraiser rather than sitting down to a chicken dinner. Mm -hmm. We have a 5K out on Randall's Island, and we usually get a thousand to two thousand people running a 5K. Uh, so that's fantastic. We're into health and yes. spirit and. Uh, trying to help people learn how to respect themselves. Yeah, I love that. That's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And maybe you could you could close this out with just telling the audience, what's one thing that this audience, the Chase, can do to support salsa caterers and to help the Bronx community? Great. Well, first I want to thank Chase. I have such a multifaceted relationship with Chase. Uh, not only bank here, but also I've done the uh, National Ascend and Ascend programs. Oh, fantastic. Helped my business to scale. We quadrupled as a result. That's awesome. Uh, so, wow. I, you know, what I would say is continue to do what you're doing. I mean, the investment in the Bronx, I, you know, I've gotten a, a recent line of credit that allows me to compete uh, with larger companies in the food service industry in New York. Um, you know, the, the Ascent program that, that educates us on how to scale up. Sure. You know, allows me to do yet even more business and, and hire. So um, I, I would say continue doing what we're doing. doing. Exactly. Do more. What you're doing. <laughs> uh, when I first started in, in uh, Salsa uh, 30, uh, 34 years ago, I bootstrapped it, you know, and I had no cash. I, cash and everything I had to turn the lights on. And I had to sell to make it 30 days and then 60 and 90. Sure. And at that point, cap, you know, the uh, having an investment was important. So Chase at that at, at that time did a character, right? And that was a key loan. And now, you know, all these years later, did a line of credit. Love that. The education. So it's that, that commitment and investment in the community and the relationships you have, like with Jesse, who shepherded me back to Chase and to the different opportunities. It's, you know, I, I, as I walked around, I kept hearing Chase people say, trust, trust, trust. I agree. It starts with trust, right? You trust somebody and you'll you'll go down that path. So it's been a great path to keep up the trust and keep up the, uh, the support of the community. It makes Thank a difference. you so much. Thank you. Um, what more can I say? This is what it's all about, right? Building relationships 
that are mission aligned to the things that we all seek to do, which is to lift this community. I wish we had more time, um, but I would invite all of you back to come and work with us. Find us doing the work. Come back and join us. Thank you, and help me thank our guests. I thank you. Chairman and CEO, Jamie Diamond. Okay. I am from the Queen, sorry. I, I grew up in Jackson Heights. For the younger people in this room, I want you to know, because it's important, I am the grandson of Greek immigrants who never finished high school. My father grew up in Washington Heights. My mother grew up in Brooklyn. I grew up in Jackson Heights. I went to PS. 69, I never dreamed that I'd be running a company called J.P. Morgan Chase. Probably until I was in maybe uh, in high school, never met a CEO. Uh, so things are possible. And uh, I say a few words in Spanish. I do know a few, but I'm not allowed to say them. <laughs> I, I always say I know one language, but I actually know probably five or six, but the other four or five, it's all curse words as you go up to New York City. and. Um, uh, someone at, J at J.P. Morgan Chase came up with the idea for a community branch. And this, I just want to tell you a little bit about a company. And the first one was in Harlem. And I went there, and I think it was the year 2000 or 2019. Uh, we now have 17. Uh, it was a fabulous idea. They had the idea of the community manager. I've been to, I think, 14 or 15 of the 17. I like to visit our branches and see them. Uh, it is amazing that they work. And when you're when you're in business, and you th see things that work. I always say, you know, which is strategy? Do more. That's it. The other thing that we're, I'll tell you a whole bunch of other things that work, which we're duplicating all around the world. By the way, we do some of this work in slums in Paris. And most of you don't know there are slums in Paris, but we do some of the same kind of work. And and uh, the community manager, that community manager thing has been so successful. We now have 150. So we took branches that don't have quite the size or living space, but we put community branches in there. The uh, small businesses, the training you mentioned, we now have hundreds of small business consultants who help train small business and growing. The Entrepreneur of Color Fund, we now do all over the United States. The community branches are in the south side of Chicago, right next to where Obama's building his, uh, his, his foundation. Crenshaw, LA, New Orleans. Uh, right next to where George Floyd was murdered in, uh, in Minneapolis. Um, we do work skills. We're working with the uh, CUNY now and the high school system with the mayor and uh, uh, David Banks, the head of the Department of Ed the Chance of Education, to try to get kids jobs, jobs, jobs. I love the fact you guys mentioned pro-business, pro-jobs. It is that collaboration that works. This is what happens. People think of the J.P. Morgan Chase as you know, that's, that's this big company somewhere, but it's literally 5,000 branches. It's 5,000 branches with great people, like you see here, serving customers every day. Large customers, small customers, wealth customers. We, I love the fact that so many people walk in here who want it to be a welcoming place. There are a lot of people who won't walk into a branch because they're nervous how they'd be treated. And uh, we want to educate people about financial education. Those who are in government, by the way, they should be teaching a little bit of that in K-12. So it's like, what's a checking account? What's a rainy day fund? Why you should not go to a pay, payday lender? And all these various things, because that education can't just be when you're 18 years old and you get here, you know, maybe possibly a little too late. So, so we're devoted to lifting up our, our neighborhoods. Uh, we do this everywhere. We have pro, special programs we do outside these branches, advancing black leaders, advancing Hispanic leaders, uh, programs for LGBT plus community, uh, education, largest affordable housing, uh, probably the largest in the country at this point, uh, and we're proud of it. We're unashamed about trying to lift up communities. I think for every person you lift up, for every community you lift up, for every home that someone buys and made the world a slightly better place, you made the country a better place. And Peter Provet and I went to high school together, by the way. I used to kick his butt in basketball. And, uh, and he told me, he reminded me, I don't remember this, I stole his girlfriend when he was 14. <laughs> 14. And uh, so we're going to continue this work. We're thrilled to be in New York. Uh, we're thrilled to be working here. I really, and thank you so much for this welcome reception, everybody. I wish I could thank everyone in person, but I'll skip that. But thank you, thank you, thank you.
Uh, what an awesome day. This is very surreal. Um, and uh, it's unfortunate we have to bring it to a close. Uh, that's the only regret today. Um, this has been an amazing experience. I want to say thank you again to everybody that's uh, come out today in support of our uh, community center grand opening here in the Boogie Down Bronx. Thank you to all of our guest speakers, all of our elected officials, and our guests. Thank you so much, Jamie, for your uh, for your remarks and your inspiration that you always challenge us with every single day. And um, you know, uh, this is the time when we get to sort of uh, cut our ceremonial ribbon. Now, um, let's just do this. Before we actually cut our ceremonial ribbon, I actually want to invite Jesse and Lewis to come up front. That's our branch manager and our community manager. Because see, the thing about it is, you know, this is the tag team here. Uh, Lewis is going to be here running the branches, uh, running the branch, and Yesenia is actually going to be running streets. And she's going to be, uh, <laughs> as she has been, and she's going to be making a difference in the community like everybody has attested to. She's doing every single day. But the thing about it is um, you can't run the Bronx without the right footwork, right? Um, and, uh, and when it comes to footwear in the Bronx, there's a staple, um, the Air Force Ones. <laughs> and see, uh, you can't run the Bronx, not just with any Air Force Ones, you have to have the 40th edition Bronx Origins Air Force Ones. You guys know what I'm talking about. So we figure if they're going to be running the streets, they may as well do so in style. And so we wanted to give Lewis and Yesenia with these Air Force Ones just as a symbol of our commitment to the work that you're doing in the Boogie Down Bronx. <laughs> So we appreciate that. And not to be outdone, don't worry, we got a pair for Jamie so you can bring that Bronx swagger back to J.P. Morgan Chase as you continue to run our company. And we got a pair of sneakers right there for you, Jamie. I'm also gonna invite you to come up if you don't mind. Come on up, come on up. Lewis is asking if he could put them on now. <laughs> and if Jamie wants to come up, you can take a picture with the uh, and Lewis with these Air Force Ones. Right before I ask all of our speakers to come up front, we did get Jamie size right. <laughs> there you go. I'm going to ask them to stay up front while I invite just of our speakers, our speakers who spoke today up here in the panel. I'm going to ask you guys to come up front while everybody else remains seated um, so we can cut our ceremonial ribbon. Go ahead and cut it. <laughs>